Hello everybody. In this video I'm going to be going over something called structural ambiguity. Um, it's difficult to explain exactly what it is without an example, so I'm just going to jump into it. Um, I may have, you may have seen me doing a little bit of this on the board today uh, during lecture, um, but we're going to use this uh, sentence as an example. So the sentence is, James Bond saw the man with binoculars. So the ambiguity in this sentence is a result of, well, is a result of with binoculars having two possible meanings. So there's two possible ways of interpreting this sentence. In one version of the sentence, James Bond saw a man who had binoculars. In the other interpretation of the sentence, um, James Bond saw a man, but the way that he saw the man was using binoculars. So the reason this is interesting is because, depending on the interpretation of the sentence, we'll actually um, be drawing a different syntax tree. Let me just make sure I'm recording. Okay, good. All right, so I'm going to start with this one. Um, as usual, I'm going to draw my, I'm going to put my parts of speech in. Now. For the purposes of this course, we're going to think of James Bond as a single noun. I was just debating this with Professor Libin in his office, um, whether or not it's a compound or whether we should be breaking it down. Again, this probably won't come up on a test, but just for our purposes, we'll say it's a noun, and then that's going to branch up into a noun phrase. Just like that. Okay. So in this, so the first video, uh, the first uh, tree I'll draw is the interpretation where the man that James Bond saw had binoculars with him. So what that means is that the man with binoculars is going to be the noun phrase of this sentence. So I'll show you um, how, that, how that's going to work. So I'm going to label that as a preposition. This is a noun, just like our other noun. It's going to come up to a noun phrase like so. And the noun phrase and the preposition are going to join together to make a preposition phrase. Sorry, prepositional phrase. That's our PP right there. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we want to have the man with binoculars be our noun phrase. So again, as I've mentioned many times by now, we have three parts that all want to be part of this noun phrase. We have a determiner, a noun, and a prepositional phrase. So, of course, we're going to use an n bar. So our n can join to the n bar, which joins the prepositional phrase, and then the determiner can attach above the n bar to our noun phrase. Now, one way of making sense of this is that we're talking about a man with binoculars. So you could put a number of different things as the, in the specifier position. You could say this man with binoculars, that man with binoculars, a man with binoculars. So really what the determiner here is doing is it's telling us which man with binoculars we're talking about. So in this case, it's the, you know, we're using a definite article. Um, indicating that there's a man that we both know about that has binoculars. And so that's why this has to attach above this n bar, because it's giving information about the whole, this whole section here, the man, um, just man with binoculars. Okay, so now we have our verb in saw, and that's going to attach up here to a verb phrase, like so. And the only thing we have to do now is add our T bar and our T down here and our T at the top. Okay, this can all attach nicely together. I'm sorry, it's taken me a long time to draw these lines. I'm using my trackpad today. <laughs> all right, that's going to go like that. And of course, because we have the word saw here. We can't attach our t-bar to this verb because we can't have two things attaching at the same place. So here I'm going to put plus past. 
All right, so there we have one interpretation where James Bond saw the man that had binoculars with him. Now let's go over to let's go over to our other let's draw our second tree. So in this interpretation, James Bond is using binoculars uh, to see the man. So similar to before, we have a prepositional phrase here, like so. These will attach here. Oops. My trackpad is pretty finicky. All right, there we go. Let's just erase that. We don't need this hovering around. Okay, and let's do the same thing over here. So James Bond, we're going to consider that to be a single noun. Again, I think as Professor Libin mentioned in lecture today, we're not going to be concerned about the morphological structure of these words. So we'll just say James Bond is a compound and leave it at that. Okay, so now what I want to do is I have saw the man. That's going to be my verb phrase. So unlike in the other example, my verb phrase is everything here. Saw the man with binoculars. That's my whole verb phrase. But here, I want saw the man to be my verb phrase. Okay? So I'll show you why that's important. So let's get my verb in there. My determiner. And man. So my determiner and noun will be on my noun phrase. Like so. Okay, so now there's something tricky. I'm just going to go ahead and make this V bar. And I'll explain why that is in a second. Okay, because basically now I need to attach this prepositional phrase to something. But now, basically in this structure, I've indicated that saw the man is like a unit of meaning in and of itself. And it's separate from binoculars. So this shows that you know James Bond saw the man, and then binoculars was the way that he saw it. So it's still all going to be a verb phrase up here. But this prepositional phrase is attaching at a different level. It's attaching up here, and it's attaching to this V bar. So what this is indicating is that seeing the man is what happened with the binoculars. Now, I haven't finished this tree yet, but we'll just quickly go over here and compare it. Over here, with binoculars, is a prepositional phrase that is giving information to the N bar. Okay? But here, it's connecting to a V bar. So I'll just quickly go ahead and finish this tree. I've got my T bar here. Down here, I've got T. Up here, I've got my TP. And we'll just connect all of these together. Like... So, I should really be connecting that there. Okay, and plus past, as usual. All right, so you can see that we have two different possible tree structures for this sentence. So it's that aspect of differing structure where we get the word structural ambiguity, right? Because depending on the interpretation of your sentence, the tree will have a different structure. So here, if I was to do, if I was to just do a triangle, right? How's my, yeah. I have a triangle right here, okay? And I have a triangle over here. Sorry if this is getting a little bit messy. So I have two triangles like that. But if I go over to this side, when it comes to the, the verb phrase, I basically have one big triangle here that's my that's my NP, right? This is one big triangle. The man with binoculars is one big noun phrase that is basically the object of the verb. Okay? 
yeah, I think I don't think there's much else to say about this, um, but it's useful to know that depending on the interpretation of the sentence, the, the tree structure might be different. And this is a kind of question that often comes up. It was on the exam last year, and it was on the exam when I did this this course. So how would I talk about this? If the question was something like, explain why this sentence is ambiguous, or explain why this sentence is structurally ambiguous, I would say something like, well, James Bond saw the man with binoculars is a sentence that can be interpreted in two different ways. In one way, it can be interpreted as James Bond saw a man that had binoculars. And in the other interpretation, it's James Bond saw um, a man using binoculars, as in James Bond had the binoculars and was using them to see the man. Now, the way that this exhibits structural ambiguity is that in one example, the prepositional phrase connects to the V bar to make a verb phrase. But in the other version, the prepositional phrase with binoculars is attaching to an N bar to make a noun phrase that is then part of a larger uh, verb phrase. But this that's the way that you want to talk about it. And this is why syntax, well, thinking about sentences in terms of syntax helps us to understand them in a deeper way. All right, I hope that was useful. So that was, again, uh, structural ambiguity. I hope you found that useful. Um, yeah, any questions, send me an email, or you can leave a comment. Why not? I'll check those too. Thank you very much.